guys, in today's video, I'm just gonna be planting a bunch of containers, starting with the ones right in front of our barn, along with the hay rack up there, and then several more in the garden, including the urns along the west side of our house, which I'm so excited about. And I hope you guys are not getting sick of planting videos, but that is what our life is right now. From about mid-April to mid-June, it's go time in terms of planting here. Um, annuals, perennial shrubs, trees, I mean, you name it. It's just kind of like the time of year for us to get everything in the ground. So I hope you're enjoying all of the videos. So I do have the plants that I'm gonna use in these containers sitting right here on the ground. Let me show you. I'm really excited about this color blend. So I decided to go with a purple fountain grass as the centerpiece. Um, if you've never grown this, it's a super common grass um, to find. It's super popular, uh, but it grows into a very spectacular looking centerpiece with really pretty plumes on the top. And it seems like every year, no matter what I try, I end up putting purple fountain grass in these containers, maybe like even somewhere midway in the season after one of my other centerpieces has died or something. So anyway, I decided to just go with that from the gate and I think that'll be great because this will go all the way through the season. Um, in fact, I can leave these through the winter for winter interest if I decide to. Then we're gonna do a Sweet Caroline light green sweet potato vine which um, I'm excited to have a foliage accent. I haven't done that in these containers for the last few years um, because they are pretty water hungry, but we do have drip set up to the pots, which I need to work on a little bit today. So that won't be a problem. This next one is gorgeous and I haven't used a lot of it in this garden, but this is a lantana called lemon zest. And I just think it's so pretty to have that bright pop of yellow back here. There's a little bit of white, like a little bit of lighter yellow and then that really bright yellow. Anyway, these should do really well because it's so hot and sunny in front of the barn typically. We have a really nice overcast day today. Then we have Super Tunia Blue Skies, which this is so beautiful. I love this color. This actually reminds me of my mom. She does a lot of like this sky blue color or light lavender and then coral and light yellow and white. Um, anyway, that's probably where my love for soft like colors comes from, I'm guessing. And then Super Tunia White. So I think it's just gonna be a really pretty blend of cheerful looking colors. And then for the hay rack up top, same blend of plants, but I'm going to forego the fountain grass because that would kind of look odd, I think, up there. The containers are cleaned out. I have bags of soil right here. I think I brought enough up here. Uh, and I do wanna show you the drip system here. So it actually comes from inside the barn. I don't know if you can see that right there. It's kind of dark. Aaron drilled a hole, which is no big deal in our barn because there's like natural holes in our barn. Um, the drip comes right out through there and then through a hole that we dr drilled in the bottom. There's actually four other drain holes on either side, like all sides of this container. And look at all those elm seeds. Oh, they're just coming off the trees like crazy right now. So you can see the quarter inch drip tubing comes up through the bottom. We'll fill it with soil and then it'll just kind of lay against the side. You know, it'll be kind of trapped against the side with soil. And then we'll flip it over the top of the soil and put some emitters in. I think I'm gonna put four, and it currently only has the one right now. Okay, so let me get them filled with soil. So I've got my clippers, extra tubing. These are half gallon per hour emitters. I want four of them in each container. The stakes right here will allow me to run the tubing through them and then I can place them a lot easier with the help of the stakes. I'm going to use a quarter inch uh, cross fitting coupler and a quarter inch T and then this tool right here helps push the tubing onto the emitters which is super handy. I'll show you that in a minute. So before I cut anything on this end, I'm gonna make all four of my lines with the half gallon emitters on the end. It's just easier to do it like this. So I'm gonna cut four lengths of this quarter inch tubing and I can trim them to size when I'm all done. Uh, so you want to give yourself a little extra, like a little bit more than you think you're going to need. So there we go. Got my four pieces and I've got my four emitters right here. So this tool is really handy. I learned about this from one of you guys on a video where I was kind of complaining about how hard it is to put emitters and couplers onto these pieces of tubing that like hurts your fingers really bad. So I didn't know this tool existed. So you stick your, let me just grab one. You stick your emitter in to one end of this tool and then you feed your tube through and then you just clamp down just like that. 
how did I not know that this tool existed? Okay, I'm also gonna do that with my couplers here too. I know that I need to have two of them coming off of the T. These are harder, the couplers are harder than the emitters are. So that's perfect. And you can twist these around, like you can twist the coupler and the tubing um, to get them to go, you know, to get the tubes to go where you want them to go. And you can configure the interior of your pot with drips and couplers however you want. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this right here. This is the one that's feeding through the bottom of the pot. I want to make sure it doesn't go down into soil and then I'm going to attach it to one end of the cross so see I've got these two sides right here and then I'm going to use a little piece I've got to hook the T to the cross so I'm just going to use a little piece of tubing okay so this is the um, tube that comes up from underneath the pot we've got a cross coupler that has this one with an emitter that will take care of kind of these plants on this side and then this one, which will take care of the front plants. And then on the other side of the cross, I just put a little piece of tube to a T coupler so that I could attach another tube with an emitter that will take care of this side. And then the last tube with an emitter to take care of the back. And that is what I'm gonna be doing on all the other containers along the front of the barn. Um, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of slow release plant food. And this just helps give a slow continuous feed to your plants, even though I do come in on a weekly basis and do water soluble fertilizer um, because I want these plants to perform really, really well and you need to feed them really well in order for that to happen. So now I'm gonna plant my centerpiece first, which is the purple fountain grass. And this is an interesting container because you would think that I would back my centerpiece up to the wall um, just because the container's kind of backed up to the wall. But you see these from three sides. You do see them from this side because our driveway runs this way. You see them from the other side and from the front. So I really do want the flower interest to be all the way around the centerpiece. Um, so we're just gonna kind of put this right in the center here. And I think that'll be really, really nice. Okay, and then I kind of forgot how I was gonna arrange all the rest of these. I do know I want my sweet potato vine to be in the front, so we'll place that one. You notice my emitter goes right to the potato vine's root ball. This, this is the most water hungry of all the plants I'm putting in. So you just wanna be mindful of that. There we go. I think I'm just gonna place everything else. I'm gonna kinda go in thirds here, I think. We'll see how this ends up. There's the blue, there's a white, a white, and a white. Okay, so super tunias are all kind of split into thirds except for this little space here. I'm gonna plant those and then the lantanas I'm gonna back plant because my super tunia is more of a dramatic spiller and the lantana's a little bit more tall. Um, so we'll get these all in. And you'll see the root balls are not very bound. This one needs water. I haven't watered anything yet today. Um, and you really don't need to tease the roots unless it's like severely root bound, um, which this time of year, you really don't find that that often um, unless you're waiting to get your annuals until a little bit later. Like this right here, you can see a lot of soil still. It looks pretty nice. Oh my goodness, I just love this combination. Sometimes it's really hard for me to want to try out different plants because sometimes I find things that I love. I'm um, like Super Tudia Bordeaux, for example. I love that plant and I could use it every single year all over in all of my containers. But then like, I don't know, we wouldn't have very many interesting videos for you guys if that's all I planted. And it is fun because sometimes when you try out new things, you find something that is that becomes your new favorite. Um, and like these Super Tunia Blue Skies, I haven't ever planted this particular Super Tunia. I think it's fairly new anyway. Um, it's almost kind of an electric blue color when I look at it close. Um, but I think I'm gonna really enjoy that. See the lantanas? We'll put on a little more height, I think. Yeah, 12 to 24 inches. Um, so I definitely didn't want them right in the front of the container. We'll let the Super Tunia and the potato vine do the spilling thing. Lantanas will grow up and be kind of my filler plant. And then I've got my centerpiece in the purple fountain grass. And I want to do four of these, kind of all four corners of the square here, like that. And it does seem like an awful lot of plants. Um, if these were Super Tunia Vistas out of that series, I definitely wouldn't plant that many in here because they grow like they're so vigorous. Uh, but these, we'll see. We'll see how vigorous they are. I mean, all Super Tunias are really great growers. 
um, and they're vigorous plants, but there's nothing quite like those Supertunia vistas. That's why we use those in the hay racks up front because you can get away with using far less of those than really anything else. I'm gonna kind of scoot everything away from the purple fountain grass a little bit because that will need its own space. And I think that that looks gorgeous. So even though I have a drip system run to these containers, every time I plant something new, I always water it in with a hose um, to begin with, just to make sure everything's settled. I check around the root balls to make sure I didn't miss any places, because you want to make sure that there's no air coming up against any of the roots. Um, and I just want to settle everything in from overhead. And then the drip system can take off from there. And the only maintenance I will have in this container is weekly fertilizing, um, and then possibly trimming toward the middle part of summer summer because these will probably reach the ground and I don't really want them trailing all over the place so I'll probably keep them level with the bottom of the pot um, but all of these do not require deadheading they're really great that way so now let me tackle the rest of these containers along the bottom of the barn then we'll go up and do the hay rack here they are all planted and they look so pretty I really like this blend of color and there's no pink are you guys surprised? So now that I'm done with these containers, I need to tackle the hay rack up there. And I'm trying to remember how I did that last year. I think I used an extension ladder because only one side of the window opens and I couldn't reach all the way to the end of the hay rack on one side. So I do think I need to get a ladder out. And I don't even know if there's soil in there or not from last year. We'll have to run upstairs and see. It's also starting to rain a little bit out here. Hopefully it doesn't pick up. It is nice today though. Oh, yep. Dang. So I need to clean that soil out and then put fresh stuff in and then plant. It's a pretty view down to the garden though. Look at that. I love it. and cocoa fiber all over my face. So I got the ladder set up and then what I did was I like heaved the whole cocoa fiber liner and soil out of the hay rack and then just tossed it inside. <laughs> so that's one way to uh, clean out your cocoa fiber liners. I think I probably just made a huge mess upstairs. Yep, huge mess. A lot safer doing it that way than trying to come down the ladder with it though. And now I've got to fill those both up with soil. So I've got brand new fresh soil in here as well as the slow release fertilizer. You can kind of see it. I already mixed it in. And then I've got three one gallon per hour emitters at each one of these hay racks. And then I went up the stairs and put the plants out the window here. So I'm going to start arranging. I think I'm going to do two blues and two whites in each one. See how this hay rack is it's split into two. I had to do it that way to actually like make the width of this window because I couldn't find one that was the exact width. Um, and then maybe two potato vine, like one on each side so that it's really even in the middle. Uh, and then all the lantana lemon zest will be kind of toward the back. All right, here we go. Well, that was an adventure. I ended up only putting three supertunias per hay rack. So I did um, a blue, a white, and then a blue. And then I did three lantana to back it because they do get quite large. I didn't space that one quite right. There we go. Only difference on the other side is I just put the one potato vine, which hopefully will kind of grow. I pointed it this direction. Hopefully it'll grow and look like it's right in the middle. All right, so let's go downstairs and see what it looks like from down there. Although I don't think it'll look that great until it starts filling in a little bit and spilling over the edges. And then I'm gonna run inside quick and clean off my face before I continue planting. Ah, <laughs> oh, crumb, I forgot to close the window while I was up there. But you can see the flowers. I don't know how well, it seems kind of dark in the camera. 
I can see them a little bit peeking over the edge, but once they start spilling, it'll look amazing. And I love that they will match the pots right underneath. So I'm up on the west side of the house getting ready to plant these four beautiful urns that we placed recently. I think this is actually the last planting project I'm gonna get to this afternoon because I got a really late start and they're taking me a lot longer than I thought they would with all the drip and all that. Um, I did fill all of these with soil all the way um, already just now and I got the drip all set up because it's pretty much exactly the same as what I just did. I'll show you a close up. I only did three emitters in each urn. So now all I need to do is put my slow release fertilizer in, show you the plants and get them in the urns. First off, before we go to the urns, since I'm standing right here, look at these climbing colette roses. <gasps> Aren't they the most beautiful things? I just love them and they're starting to climb up the trellis. Arbor, whatever. Here comes Russell. And I did plant some Supertunia snowdrift uh, in each one of the boxwood swoops here uh, because I thought it would be fun to try it out in the landscape as opposed to containers like we did out at my parents' house. So we'll see how they do. Each one of these is supposed to get like two feet tall by four feet wide, so I only planted six. Um, and I think they'll fill in this space just perfect. And here are the plants that I chose. So we're gonna do another purple fountain grass. I got some great big ones for this project because I kind of wanted instant impact. And then we're gonna surround those grasses with some diamond frost euphorbia, which has that beautiful ethereal kind of cloud-like, I don't know, it's just so pretty, the little white blooms. And then Super Bell's white right here. And then some Dichondra Silver Falls for our weeping foliage accent. So last year I planted Super Bell's White, Diamond Frost Euphorbia, and then a Skyrocket Penicetum, I think. No, Desert Plains Penicetum in the containers in front of the vegetable garden. And they were so gorgeous. They did so well. And these containers are not that far away. I mean, the vegetable garden's right there. Um, so these are gonna get pretty much the same conditions that that container had last year. And so I kind of wanted to replicate that this year because I had such great luck. Also having the Supertunia snowdrift in the uh, boxwood soup, so having the white on that side of the pathway and then drawing the white over into the containers, I think will be a really restful thing to do. Um, and then I can start filling in the rest of the area with some other color. Um, but I think I'm gonna do one fountain grass, um, maybe, three of all the rest of the plants. We'll have to see. These are a little bit smaller than the planters I just planted. So this is the Esplanade urn from Unique Stone on a pillar that I cannot remember the name of. These do not come together. You have to order them separately, um, but they're beautiful. I absolutely, absolutely love them. And you can see the drip, the quarter inch drip comes right through the bottom. In fact, we showed this to you in another video. We run the drip up because there is a hole through the pillar and then a hole, the drainage hole up through the urn. And then it comes in right here. I put a cross coupler and then I did three emitters in this container, just kind of split it into thirds. So all of these urns are ready for planting. All right guys, they're all planted and I love, love them. I think they look like such an elegant, classic mix of colors and textures. I just love like the all white look with that grass in the middle and everything of course will grow crazy. They'll get really big. I ended up doing the one grass, then I did three diamond frost euphorbias kind of set back from the edge. And then in front of the diamond frost I did the Dichondra Silver Falls, and then in between each grouping of that, I did the Super Bells White. And I'm hopeful that these will look just like the containers that were in front of the vegetable garden. I hope they fill in and are as full of flowers as those were. But I think it was kind of the right thing to do in terms of color, um, because it looks so great with this style of urn, as well as the white Supertunias that we have on the other side. I just love it. And the North Pole Arborvitas are doing so well. We were looking at pictures the other day of what they look like when we planted them. And they were about, they were barely over this second, like this middle, I guess, middle uh, fence rail right here. So they have grown significantly. I mean, putting on that much growth. And then they've at least doubled, if not more, in size. 
I can't wait until they become a solid green wall because can you imagine these urns um, set apart from any distractions you know in the background but just having that solid green wall that's 10 to 15 feet tall um, I think the contrast will be beautiful uh, we also did end up my mom found uh, seven more North Pole Arborvitae ordered them in for us so um, we could finish off the hedge it's gonna look a little funny for a while but these will catch up um, but because I didn't realize I hadn't really thought of the urns I was going to do a big evergreen right here and so the er, the arbovita hedge was going to kind of disappear behind that big spruce but then I decided to go with the urns so I need to continue my green wall all the way down to the birch and then this is where I'll start in with my bigger plantings of evergreens so that this will be my disappearing wall kind of like right in here I hope that makes sense um, but this has been kind of an evolving process just like everything is in our garden um, so it's been really fun to kind of see it go from what it was when we moved in to what it is today and what it I can kind of see the potential for what it will be here and even like a couple years or five years or ten years it's going to be amazing and the last little bit is still yet to be mulched this is where we ended up when we have our stack of mulch over there um, we are just needing extra time to get that done but we're almost there so anyway guys that is it for this video I got two big groupings of pots done which makes me happy they're all on drip so after today after I water them all in they're good to go for the season in terms of that I don't have like a daily maintenance chore with them which is awesome and that's what takes a little extra time getting them all set up like that but it's 100% worth it because I can enjoy them so much more when I'm not feeling like I'm a slave to them every day you know making sure that either myself or somebody else is here to give them water um, so anyway thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.